Here is one clear way to see how devastating the pandemic has been for this country. The average life expectancy for Americans fell by a full year in the first half of 2020. That is the biggest decline since World War II. The drop was especially severe for people of color, particularly black men, whose life expectancy fell by a full three years. The average black man now lives until 68, seven years less than the average white man. One reason for the sharper drop for black people is that COVID is killing them at younger ages. The COVID death rate for black people between the ages of 35 and 44, that's my age group, was nine times greater than it was for white people last year. Here are just a few of the black men who died from COVID in the very first two months of the pandemic. They were military veterans, firefighters, pastors, engineers, businessmen, dads, husbands, and brothers. We have lost too many of them and way too soon. And joining me now to discuss is Dr. Chris Purnell, a public health physician and a fellow at the American College of Preventative Medicine. And so good to see you and have you back. Dr. Purnell, your own father died of COVID-19 and I am so sorry um, and my deepest, deepest condolences um, to you for your loss. From your personal experience and your work, are you surprised by the sharper drop in life expectancy for black people given how COVID has impacted the black community? Not at all, Zerlina. Um, even before the COVID-19 pandemic struck, you could just look by zip codes and you could see black people living on average uh, multiple years uh, less than white persons, people who live just miles away from them. So when you have that level of inequity at the baseline, when you have um, structural racism and structural determinants set up such that black and brown groups don't fare as well across multiple sectors, and then you put an unprecedented health crisis on top of it, this is what you get. You get those staggering declines. That decline of three years in black males alone in life expectancy has been borne out in examples in my family. In addition to losing my dad, I lost my cousin just before the new year. And my cousin, he was a postal worker, so an essential worker. And he was just 59 years old. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I, on my dad's side of my family, we've lost several cousins um, and not all of them were old. Some of them fall within um, these younger age categories. And so I think it's black people are feeling this in, you know, it's not just a number at the bottom of the screen. We know the people who are passing away. Um, and, you know, I think anecdotally, we are an example that this is impacting black Americans in it's two black people and we both have met multiple family members impacted. Uh, why is it that black, black Americans are dying at, of COVID at younger ages? Um, it feels to me like that fact alone, it completely contradicts the misleading uh, information we got from the beginning, which basically said COVID only kills elderly people and those are the only people that have to be worried. I'll tell you one quick sentence. Racism is a pre-existing condition. So systemic racism kills. Uh, systemic racism not only robs you of life opportunities, it robs you of healthy life exposures, whether that is having a job with a decent um, livable wage, whether that is access to quality education so you can break into that next income bracket, whether that is living in a neighborhood where the air is polluted. Uh, I've said this before and I'll say it again for everyone. Health is polluted. Political, unfortunately, because health is the root or is rooted in social determinants of health. Health is rooted in where you live, where you work, where you play and where you pray. Mm -hmm. And those are often things that are structural issues. So that's why we see black men, black women, black and brown people at the lower end of this totem pole once again. And if we didn't have a resolve before, we need to have a resolve now because we're losing critical lives in our nation. I mean, part of part of the problem for me with this idea that um, health is political is that why is that? Should it be? Because I, I, I don't every human being should be able to live right. Healthy lives and happy lives that that should be just across the board. Every single human being who is breathing air should be able to um, do it in a healthy manner. Why, why is healthcare political? Why is health po political? Do you think it should be? 
No, it should not be. Health should not be political, but it is. It is because of what I just described. Say, for instance, you could what life expectancy is. It's a baby born today, how long you are expected to live on average. I could look at children born in one zip code and only travel mere miles, four miles, five miles. And those two children will have different life expectancies. And this was even before the pandemic struck. So those are factors that are systemic. Those are factors that are structural. Systemic racism is about structuring opportunity, whereby one group is disadvantaged and another group is advantaged. But the strength of a society as a whole is zapped. When you have less access to quality health care, less access to quality education, less access to jobs where you can earn a livable wage, less access to clean air, less access to walkable streets, those things impact your life. And those things are rooted in mm-hmm. systemic racism. I'll point to one policy, redlining. Black and brown groups, marginalized groups, historically excluded groups, oftentimes live in substandard housing in neighborhoods that have been economically disenfranchised and disinvested. That impacts their health. Absolutely. It's like when you break it down that way, I don't know how anybody could question whether or not structural racism is a thing. I'm like, just look at around you points at air. Uh, looking at the U.S. as a whole, uh, life expectancy life expectancy here began to fall below that of other developed countries around ni- in the middle of the 1980s, right the decade I was born. And researchers think growing economic inequality in the United States is a cause. What do you think? Definitely. Um, The income and economic disparity in the United States is abysmal. And that income and economic disparity is further stratified along race and ethnic groups. If you think about what other nations invest in social services, we pell in comparison. Healthcare in the United States is very costly, but we don't get all the bangs for our bucks because we don't make the investments in those things like those social determinants, those non-clinical determinants. And it's about time that we do invest in that because investing in that gives someone a different life exposure whereby that life exposure will specifically determine your health outcomes. Think about ACEs, think about children, adverse childhood events, just living in toxic stress, just living in a toxic environment takes years off of your life and impacts health outcomes through the acquirement of uh, conditions, hypertension, stroke, Mm -hmm. diabetes. This has been such an educational segment, and I hope that folks have learned a lot about how this all works. Uh, Dr. Chris Purnell, thank you so much for being here and for, uh, for coming to educate us on structural racism. It's really, really helpful to have you. Please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen, and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.